What's up survivors, I'm Natural Born and welcome to episode 6 of the 7 Days to Die 1.0 Survival Guide. And today is day 7 and that means it's Horde Night. So, in the last episode we managed to get our fighting position set up for the Horde. Now, in this episode I would like to start doing a bit of work on these rooms, setting them up as storage rooms and as... Now in this episode I would like to get these rooms set up as storage rooms and another one for our workstations. And speaking of workstations, I've been mentioning in all of these past episodes that the one thing we are lacking on is mechanical parts now somebody i can't remember who but shout outs to you survivor reminded me that you can actually scrap engines for mechanical parts now this completely slipped my mind and i do know that over here we do have an engine and speaking of which we can see that this storage crate here still says test on it go ahead and open it our chrysanthemum seed is still there we will keep that storage box there for the rest of the series just to see if we do encounter any bugs with it hopefully not because yeah, as i mentioned we're about to build our own storage room and it would be devastating to lose all of our storage so you can see right here we have an engine we go ahead scrap this engine you can see down there 30 mechanical parts so we are going to go get ourselves a wrench and we're going to be making a workbench i'm going to take all that loot with me and i tell you what while we're here we might as well uh grab all these bones oh maybe not we're a bit <laughs> we're a bit full on crap I'll tell you what we'll scrap that uh we're gonna drop the broken glass because as I mentioned, every item in this game has a purpose. That one barely does. Same with this here, a note from the Duke of Never's Game. We're going to go ahead and scrap that. Uh, seven old cash, we're going to scrap that. That should be more than enough to go ahead and harvest these bodies. Now, as you can see here as well, this is a great little tip. We press right trigger with the bone knife. You can see this here is the harvesting speed not very fast now with left trigger you can power attack if you look away power attack look away you can continue to power attack and that can help you break down these gore blocks a lot faster just like that all right so first up on our list is a wrench we're going to go ahead track that we need two duct tape and 12 forged iron should have some forged iron in here. Perfect. Some more forged iron there. Um, we'll take the cloth, the water. Gonna go ahead and eat that meat. Can't see any glue in there, so we're gonna have to go ahead and craft some glue. Yeah, that is gonna be the case. And I'm pretty sure that we are also going to need duct tape for the workbench not 100 percent sure but if i had to take a wild guess then uh, i'd say that would be the case craft that and we have bones a couple bones there now this time we're going to go ahead and craft all of the glue and we'll give that a quick moment to summer and we'll check on the workbench all right five duct tape for that as well and 100 nails so we will go get some nails organized in the forge so we don't actually have any iron there either Do, how many nails can we craft nine that ain't gonna do it all right new plan while we're waiting for that to craft we're gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of iron now if we take a quick look at the map you can see here you have these colored spots now if i can zoom in it's about as far as we can go this brown spot right here this is iron the white spots should be nitrate powder and see we've got some over here too and this blue spot here is going to be lead so we're going to go ahead we're going to chuck a marker down right there and we're going to go grab some iron 
Let me know in the comments down below how do you think Hordenite is going to go in the new base. Better yet, let me know how your guys' Horde Knights have gone. I know for Legacy players, <laughs> doing a Horde Knight in 1.0 will be one hell of a change. Alright, that should be more than enough for now. We'll go back to the base, get that smelting down in the forge, and we will start clearing out those rooms to start getting some proper storage organised. Because yeah, being this unorganised seven days into a series is killing me. And at the end of the day, if we do encounter a bug where we lose all of our storage, then hey, that's just the way it is, and we'll just have to find a way to bounce back from that. One thing I am just a fraction concerned about is zombies trying to climb on crap and pretty much make their own path up to the second floor. Now, like I said, we shouldn't have any issues. But uh, you never know with this game. And yeah, that jump there. <laughs> Let's hope no zombies get that idea. Alright, grab that glue. Um, what are we missing? Water. Alright, we'll grab that as well. Right, so we'll go ahead and turn this into duct tape. So that two, seven, I think it was five for the workbench, so we may even be fine here. We might have enough duct tape for the workbench as well, which will be great. Nails, 56, might as well get those going now. And we're going to go ahead and start crafting this wrench. Two minutes. Right, while we do that, we're going to have a quick look at our skills. Now, there's a lot of skills that I really want to go into, but as I mentioned in earlier episodes, no matter what skill tree you choose, it's good to try focus on that skill tree before you start branching into other ones. It's all right to take a perk here and there. Usually, if you go into any of these other trees, you will have to, at some point, come into Intellect and put a point into Advanced Engineering and Grease Monkey so you can make progression with your workbenches and vehicles. Now, as I mentioned, Salvage Operations is one that I really would like to get my hands on, especially since we've just gotten our hands on a wrench. Lucky Looter is another great one. It's going to increase your loot stage, as I mentioned in another episode. If we come over to Character, we come over to four character stats down here you can see your loot stage and the higher your loot stage the better the loot you're going to find but not only that with lucky looter it also increases how fast you loot so how long it takes to open containers which is more a quality of life thing than anything minus 69 and mother load the two mining perks very good master chef can be great as well because it makes everything that you cook a lot cheaper and it cooks a lot faster food can take days to cook in this especially if you're bulk crafting it fortitude pretty much every perk in the fortitude tree i definitely like cardio it's going to help you re regain stamina while sprinting iron gut is going to now what what it does is it does a few things allows you to hold your breath for longer reduces food and water loss from physical exertion a chance of dysentery is reduced but the big main thing that you want iron gut for is buffs from consumables last 10 percent longer you max this out they last 50 percent longer that is all of your candies learning elixirs recogs so a learning elixir will allow your character to gain more xp it gives you an increased amount of time where you can get extra XP, and we're going to go pick one of those up from the trader before Horde Night. Horde Night is one of the best times to drink a learning elixir, because we're going to be killing a lot of zombies, which is going to equal to a lot of XP. Another great one is all the candies. As I mentioned, you can get candies for mining harvest, for salvaging harvest. You can get ones that give you a better percentage for bartering, so buying and selling. And that just makes all of these last longer. 
healing factor is great this one you can see here gain one health every 35 seconds with natural healing critical injuries heal 20 percent faster you come down to where it's maxed out gain one health every five seconds with natural healing now the only problem with this is that that healing comes from your food so every point of health that you heal you lose a point of food not so important in the late game because food is very easy to come by but in the early game that one can be more of a curse than a blessing pain tolerance as we covered makes your character take less damage from zombies living off the land the first perk here is one that i recommend to everybody at least this perk in all builds this allows you to get double the harvest of wild or planted crops now planting crops without being specked into living off the land or having the farming outfit is definitely not worth it farming is for farming to be viable you need to be specked into it and you need the armor but double the harvest of wild crops very good that's your chrysanthemum your golden rod and your cotton well insulated has zero purpose in the game at the moment as far as i can tell there is no temperature debuffs in the game at the moment you have the huntsman this is going to allow you to harvest more resources from animals and then the machine gunner there is the different types of machine gun in this game is the pipe machine gun and then it goes to the ak-47 and then it goes to the tactical assault rifle and then it goes to the m60 now the m60 is a light machine gun when you put a drum magazine mod so normally it holds 60 rounds you can put a drum magazine mod in it boosting that up to 120 fantastic and then we have the brawler which is using your fist as a weapon sounds like we've got an airdrop coming in and our nails should be good to go 300 far too many uh, we'll just go ahead and craft 100 that way we've got a few extras get that wrench down there beautiful all right where's that um airdrop that is the big question bit too far for me to want to be running on horde night all right sounds like we have a screamer was about to uh grab a couple things to take over to the trader to sell but uh that way we could go pick up our learning elixir before i got a bit too caught up into renovations all right I'm gonna make sure she's seen us through there but as you can see beautiful she's gone ahead and she passed up nicely now the problem with these iron bars or these wooden bars i should say is zombies can see you through them now that's only really an issue when you're dealing with cops i doubt that we're going to get any cops on our first horde night it's not impossible but i just don't think it's going to be happening but when, once they get line of sight they will start puking at you but here we go quick wee test run you can see here oh easy as that um all right don't have time to be fluffing about waiting for these uh zombies to come up just gonna have a quick look i think we had um right i'm just gonna dump all this crap in here we don't need the workbench right now so it's not super important that we get our hands on it there's the other screamer uh we'll grab that Tell you what, we'll sell those hunting knives. Might as well sell that. And I think there might be a couple of things downstairs too. Alright, nice wee test run here. Oh. Yeah, so you can see here she's just deciding to beat on that block. Not great, but uh we will deal with that. Right, lady, there we go. it <laughs> it's going to be intense that's for sure it's not a lot of room normally i wouldn't uh set up my fighting position in the lobby of the house but you know it's nice to try something different every time that you play this game and oh, 
we've got one hell of a mess down there as i've stated this base here is not going to be the main base this is temporary so I'm not too worried what happens with this place as long as we don't end up losing the loot that's here all right come on people line up Stamina is going to be a real issue. Would it be nice if we could have got our hands on coffee? You can see this guy down here. So this is what they do. He's taken a bit of damage and he's decided, you know what? Screw you. I'm just going to start beating on random shit. And then they make their way back up here. So that's the only problem I can really see happening with this base. Is our zombies just tear it apart. I'm going to go check out of the storage quickly. Um, tell you what, I'm going to get rid of that because I'm not going to use it. Uh, we'll hold on to that just in case. And I do want to hold on to all the parts. Like I said, if we um, carry this series on for long enough, then we will eventually respec and we will showcase all of the different classes in the game. We'll make everything legendary and yeah, we'll go into a brawler build, we'll do a spear build. We can do clubs and And yeah, I feel like I'm missing another weapon, but I can't can't think of it off the top of my head. Alright, it's enough of that shit. We need to go to the trader, go pick up our learning elixir. And yeah, pretty much make sure we're ready for Horde Night and I'll start pulling these rooms apart and see what storage I can get down. I like to have storage boxes that are allocated to crafting, um, storage boxes for parts, ammo, ammo crafting, weapons, tools, armor, mods, all of that good stuff. Makes it a lot easier to find what you're looking for and a lot quicker at that too. You're welcome here if you shut the fuck up and buy something. I tell you what, mate, might take you up on that. You're lucky I can't get in here on board night. Food or just stand there like a goddamn idiot. Be bringing all the zombies over. All right, so we've got 1,900 dotes. He does reset. Oh, he might have reset today, actually. Day seven. So learning elixir, six thousand dotes. When you go ahead and use one of these, it resets all of your skill points now one of the things we will be speaking into is bartering and when you're pretty much with all of your max bonuses into bartering you can pick these up for about 1500 dukes each so it's good to stock up on those when you get the chance all right does he have glue or duct tape because i would take that we will take the cobblestone won't say no to that Got a wrench there. I probably would have brought that if I'm being 100% honest with you. If that legend didn't remind me that you could scrap engines. Books. Now, there's only a couple books that I would be super tempted to buy. One of them I would buy no matter what build I was using. And that is the cargo storage mod for the drone. Um, apart from that. If I really needed to and we had the stun baton, I would buy the book if it allowed me to craft the stun repulse mod. Speaking of mods, not bad. What about meds? Yeah, we're pretty good for meds. Tell you what, just because of the last episode, we'll go ahead and buy one of those. We might as well, you know what, we're going to buy them all, just in case. Lanterns are fantastic. I will go ahead and grab that. They are dirt oh, cheap, you and tea, they man. allow well, they are pretty much a free light source. Way. Now, as I mentioned, there is power in this game. Ah, oh, no learning elixirs. Damn, that sucks. Grandpa's awesome source, 1,500 dukes, bartering plus 10. If you come over here, 
There's no sugar butts, but the candies are always 300 dukes each. That gives you plus 10 bartering as well. You're going to go ahead and purchase this one. Make sure that you are going to sell a lot. You pretty much want to make sure you're going to make that money back and then some. Now, apart from that, Hackers is great. As I mentioned, this candy helps you, gives you a plus 20% salvage harvest. And you can see here, duration, 6 minutes. When you speak into Iron Gut, that's what extends this time there. Uh, Nerd Tats, that one's for the Stumbaton, but we didn't get that, so we're not going to worry about it. And yeah, another thing you can do, if you're looking for some easy dukes early game, and you do manage to get your hands on a wrench... You can go ahead and just start pulling apart vehicles. This is something I recommend to do either way because you're going to get, as you can see, mechanical parts, a little bit of cloth, iron, pipes, plastic, gas. Gas is one of the bigger things that you're going to need because the way to get gas is you need to go to the desert and mine oil shale. But to cook that into gas, you're going to need a chem station. Now, you can buy gas off the trader, and that is more than likely what you're going to have to do, because wrenching vehicles, although you get gas, you do not get a lot of gas from doing it. But you can see there, we've got a bunch of fantastic resources, and yeah, the Horde Knight is getting very close. Go ahead and shut that door. And I'll tell you what, I'm so indecisive, we're going to go ahead and loot what we can in this place quickly because uh yeah we don't know if this place will be standing at the end of the night like i said we should be fine but uh you never know oh the fuck we got a snake in the house oh well free meat for us All right, a little bit of cornmeal. We can use that with boiled water to turn it into cornbread. Be a good food source in the early game. A little bit of food there, which is good, because uh, we need food. A couple of coffee beans. I wonder if we can make coffee yet. Not too sure. Looks like a sneaky food pile up there. A little bit more food gonna need it all right so we're just gonna dump all of that crap i'm gonna go ahead and take the lantern and we're gonna place that down now we're gonna need the hammer for repairs so just pop the wrench away for now i do want to take all of these food related items upstairs including the bones uh i won't worry about the seeds for now but we do need to get some food cooking up and see what our food situation is looking like. Tell you what, we got the sham sandwiches. We might even eat those before the horde gets here. So we'll take one of those vitamins. All right, a little bit of water cooking up. Now what can we do in the ways of food? Grilled meat. Grilled corn and baked potatoes i'll take it and yeah we didn't manage to get the um workbench made either and we're looking a bit thirsty so what i'm gonna do is first hopefully i've got enough time to do this with the lanterns if you go up to shape you can see here you can change the color of it so we're going to go ahead select the red one advance rotation and we're going to place that uh, place it right there. You see that just gives us a little bit of extra light back here. Probably would have even been better in that room now that I think about it. So if we pick that up quickly. Pushing it for time here, but it's all good. And we'll just... Uh... Well, she's going to be floating from the roof, but uh, <laughs> it's all right. Maybe if we... Yeah, no, I'd say right there. Perfect. Gives us a little bit of light in here. Like I said, I'm pressing it for time, but it's all good. We're going to go drink from the river over here. I need to get back to the base, grab the cobblestone, and yeah, I guess we're not setting up the uh, storage room today. Don't know where all the time goes, eh? But she just she just flies by.
one thing we're going to need to do is craft a bucket and bring a water source back to the base. Now, I believe you can only craft the bucket in the workbench, so that is something we will 100% be doing in the next episode. So we don't have to worry about running all the way over there every single episode. Alright, we have less than an hour until the horde approaches. So I do want frames on my hotbar. And I would prefer that hammer to be right there. Now, the reason I have my medical bandages here is usually, most of the time, you have your melee weapon in your hand. That way, if you do need to swap to them, it's right there. Alright, where's our cobblestone? Perfect, up there. And... Tell you what, we will grab the pipe shotgun. As much as I hate it, it is uh, better than nothing. As you can see, that lantern has just added a nice amount of light to the room. Should be able to get a good view of what's going on in there. And yeah, holy shit, survivors. It is almost time for the first Horde Night of this world. And not only that, this is my first Horde Night in console on 1.0. First Horde Night on console in about a year as well. So uh, yeah, this should be a lot of fun. And yeah, I think we're good for everything. So yeah, now it's just about waiting. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to pop that vitamin. Oh, actually, yeah, one thing I didn't do was spend my skill points. Alright, start smashing these sandwiches back. Alright, disgusting. And, oh, didn't want to change that. Alright, holy shit, it's that time, survivor. Yeah, I think we'll be fine with skill points. We can spend those after Horde Night, providing I remember. And oh shit, here we go. Speedy little bastards, aren't they? But yeah, as you can see, with the fighting position, see how these guys are falling down? This is the beauty of these poles. Now the only problem with this fighting position is you need to be aware how close you are standing to the zombies. Because yeah, they do have a good amount of reach on you, and they will smack you if they can reach you. Now the beauty of eating that vitamin before we've done this is we will not get infected. That will protect us from infection. You can see how he's standing on that zombie's head. They will keep piling up, and that's why we put those wedge tips up the top see that we've uh, taken a bit of damage down here, do some quick repairs, make that damages from me. You guys have watched my legacy let's play, you will know for a fact that I am the biggest danger to any horde base that I make. Although 1.0 it's a bit different, <laughs> there is a lot more zombies that are a lot more brutal, aka the Demolisher. Doing pretty good so far though, nothing, nothing too crazy. Now the only problem is if uh, there's zombies in other parts of the house. You can see she's down there having a wee bang on the walls. We'll just stand here and see what they're doing for a minute. So you can see they're just replaying their loop. But you can see he's, he's up there. They're all stacking up, so we'll go deal with them quickly. And for anybody wondering, we do have Blood Moon set to 64 zombies, which is max. Now just because you set it to 64 zombies does not mean that's what you're going to get on your first board night. That number just means at any given time, 
that is the maximum amount of zombies that you can have in your world but it is it is dependent on your game stage so we have a very low game stage we can we can take a second to check that out here game stage 16 so you know looks like we're probably getting a maximum of eight zombies here at the moment anywhere from eight to twelve zombies as we progress through the game as we level up and our game stage goes up that number of zombies will increase until the point that we are at 64 zombies Right. What are they doing down there? Yeah, they're all they're all um completing the loop nicely. But uh yeah, you'll think everything's going good and the next thing you know you'll hear a block break and some bastard will carve away up from the bottom floor. <laughs> Now one thing I like to do in the later game when you've got a bit of dupes is buy Mega Crush. Mega Crush was in the Legacy Edition, it was one of the rarest items in the game to find. Now you can buy them from vending machines in 1.0 and they increase your run speed by, I think it's, it's I'm pretty sure it's 10%, but uh, it could be 15, doubt that it's 20 but um, I like to have one of those on me on Horde Nights just in case shit goes down, pop your Mega Crush and you can get out of there quick. Uh, it's also good if you decide to do Horde Night on foot. That is something we will do in this series. Don't know how it'll go on console, but we will pop a Mega Crush and we will see if we can fight off a horde of 64 zombies on foot. Should be a lot of fun. Yeah, somebody mentioned because every time I go to reload, I press circle on my controller, which is the menu. Apparently on Legacy, square was reload. Yeah. Uh, not square, sorry, circle was reload. And yeah, that would make a lot of sense because I don't know why I'm doing it. It's just every time I go to reload, it is uh, definitely muscle memory. Right, so what we're encountering here, not good, not good at all. No zombies at the fighting position. She's glitched into the bloody floor. We've got one fella up there. Means the other guys are somewhere else. I mean, I could jump down there and have a look, but uh, <laughs> it's not, not the uh, smartest idea. You know, stay in your base, stay safe. She's come up. I just want to get this lady out of the wall because she's just going to keep banging on that wall. Yeah, not good. Not good at all. Because as I mentioned, the horde will not stop until 4am. They will continue to come. Usually they come in waves. Don't know if it's two or three waves. Usually around 1 p.m. you'll get a wave where different types of zombies will start spawning. You know, your first wave of the horde might be pretty chilled. Say for example, you could be further in the game, you could just have a bunch of normal zombies, ferals, second wave comes through and then demolishes start showing up. And, uh, yeah, we're pretty much at that time right now. But um, the only problem is zombies aren't showing up. Which tells me that they are stuck downstairs somewhere. They're probably beating on a wall. Oh, see so we've almost lost that block right there. Go so ahead and fix that. Looks like they're uh, doing a bit of block damage at the moment too. But that's all good. Just got this uh, terrible feeling a zombie's going to pop up behind me. <laughs> Did go ahead and patch that hole up there. And I don't think there were any other locations within here that they could get up. But you never know. Can't see anything out there. 
got this guy up there. Um, was about to jump down there too. But I mean, guys, don't take the risk. <laughs> love to get down there though uh, see what is happening so I can't see anybody down there not that I was down there for long but <laughs> just uh, checking if I can see them piled up in the hallways or anything like that Alright, make sure you stay on top of repairs. And providing you do that and you're not getting overrun, then you shouldn't have any issues on board night. Unless you're like me, you just keep getting that little bit too close to the zombies. Might as well pull out the uh the pipe shotgun. Give you guys a wee showcase of what it can do. Line them up. So there we go. Nice point blank range we got to kill, but you look at the reload time on that animation and it is not great. Like I said, it's good if you're in an oh shit moment, especially day one or day two and you're dealing with the dog, you miss the headshot and that zombie did not need to die. But uh, you better pop in that and then going straight back to your weapon. If you're caught in one of those moments. seen any ferals at all so that's been great as soon as it hits four o'clock in the morning we will be going downstairs so we can look around and see what the damage is see where zombies have been caught up now because we will be in this house for a while i would like to open that hallway up underneath us i'd like to fill the blocks under these rooms or fill the rooms under these rooms sorry with solid blocks I'd like to open up that area there, just to make it easier for zombies to get in. Uh, one thing that you will encounter a lot of on all nights is vultures. You will hear them, definitely hear them before you see them. If we have vultures, we will come out here and shoot them. A lot of times it can be good to leave bars like this at the roof of your fighting position, so you can see through to the sky and you can shoot vultures when they show up. When you get later into the game and you start setting up electricity and stuff, you can get SMG turrets and shotgun turrets and you can set those up so they automatically will kill the birds when they see them. Yeah, there's definitely zombies down there. Uh, very, very concerning. And uh, sometimes it can be good to set up a backup fighting position just in case shit hits the fan you can drop back here you could have this enclosed and have some hatches that you can shut that leaves you a wee window to attack through there is nothing wrong with having a plan b and a ward base Well, the pipe shotgun came in pretty clutch for Horde Knight. Saves us on our 9mm and our 7.62 because I would prefer to have those on me when we're out and about questing. Another thing with Horde Knights is you can have all your forges going, doesn't matter how much heat you generate, screamers will not show up. But when you've been on your guns all night, as soon as it hits 4 o'clock in the morning, if you're still shooting, then screamers will come and they will come fast. So be aware of that. Uh, we're very, very close here to the end of the night. Let's swap back and pipe it on. 
very close to another level up that would be nice we had four skill points to spend after this There we go. First Blood Moon survived. We're going to go downstairs and we're going to see what damage is. Still a few zombies, so I'm going to go ahead and repair that. And repair that before we head down there. Make sure we're fully loaded. Yeah, we should be pretty good. All right. Here we go. One zombie in here. Oh, settle down, lady. God damn. So that they've carved themselves path through there uh, we don't want to get ourselves cornered here but yeah that's fine i'm uh easy with that that helps him get into the house easier no one in the garage anyone down here no oh all right crazy well yeah, I guess there wasn't a lot of zombies downstairs. They um must have just been bugger all zombies throughout the night. And that's all good. A lot of that is related to our game stage. Like I said, we didn't have a high game stage. Mainly because we died three times. And as I mentioned, that does lower your game stage. Do some uh, minor repairs here. Beautiful, there's that level we were looking for. Should be another zombie on their way, but yeah, we're just going to have a quick look here. You can see all these plates are fine, wedge tips up top are fine, and then we just have the front blocks on the fighting position. So we go ahead, repair these. And yeah, we're pretty much fully repaired from there. The old janitor down here. And what about down here? So yeah, a couple hits there. Nothing too crazy. Same with there. And we'll go ahead and check here. So yeah, a little bit of damage. Nothing too crazy. But yeah, as the series progresses and our game stage does go up, then uh yeah the amount of zombies that show up will increase and the damage will be a lot more catastrophic than that all right we're pretty good for i'm gonna go ahead eat a tiny bit of food uh we're good on the water we did find a schematic in the one loot bag we got and that is the foregrip the foregrip increases handling and accuracy when firing weapons from the hip or while moving very nice to have and yeah with that survivors that is pretty much it we're gonna head up to the roof we're gonna spend those skill points because let's be honest if i don't do it now then it's never going to happen i'll come in here one day and we'll have 20 bloody skill points all right so like i said i do want to put one point into salvage ops so i'm just going to go ahead and do that now and i think we're going to go one into intellect and we must need five for this one here. Yes, five. Uh, advanced Engineering and Grease Monkey. I would like to go into both of those, but we have unlocked Calculated Attack. Now, usually each melee weapon has its own skill within its tree that allows you to attack faster. This is the one for the Intellect Tree. Attack speeds with batons are 10% faster. I'm going to go ahead and take that as well. Um, we'll go check our challenges, see what we've got. We've got sell five items, harvest ten rotten flesh, and survive the first blood moon. But yeah guys, with that, that is the end of today's episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe for more console content. But as always, Stay safe out there, survivors, and I'll see you in the next one.